let us continue our discussion on how to implement a boolean function using demultiplexer in the previous video we had seen how do we realize a boolean function when the number of select lines of the demultiplexer that is given to us is equal to the number of input variables in the problem so we connected each of the input variable to a select line which resulted in each output being a min term and we selected those min terms that were given to us in the problem and we gave it as an input to an OR gate and the output of the OR gate gave us the function that was asked to implement in the problem. So here we are given implement the function f of a comma b comma c which is a summation of min terms 0 1 3 and 5 using 1 to 4 demultiplexer. So in order to determine the number of select lines, you can compare this given demultiplexer with its general form that will be 1 is to 2 power n and this 1 is to 4 demultiplexer can be written as 1 is to 2 power 2. So n will be 2 that is the number of select lines is 2 and the number of input variables in the problems is 3. So this will be so before seeing how do we implement this function using 1 to 4 demultiplexer, let us try to implement this function using a 4 to 1 multiplexer. So the general form of a multiplexer is 2 power n is to 1 which again gives us n is equal to 2 that means the number of select lines is 2. So this is a truth table you can see that there are three variables so there will be eight input combinations starting from 0 0 0 and ending at 1 1 1 and the output is 1 for min term 0 1 3 and 5 so for 0 it is 1 for 1 it is 1 for 3 it is 1 and for 5 it is 1 now what did we do in case of a 4 is to 1 multiplexer is So this was your block diagram of 4 is to 1 multiplexer. We connected the LSB input variable and the LSB plus 1 input variable to the select lines. And we made use of the implementation table to identify the values that must be connected to each of this input data lines. So let us construct the implementation table. We circle those min terms that are given to us in the problem. We had four rules which helped us in determining to what values must each of this data line be connected to. So using those four rules, D0 must be connected to A bar, D1 must be connected to 1, D2 must be connected to logic 0 and D3 must be connected to A bar. So how did we arrive at this? can be understood if we look at the truth table very carefully see data line this is d0 d1 d2 and d3 so data line d0 is selected when bc is 0 0 so in this truth table you can see that there are two rows in which bc is 0 0 that is this row and this row so using these two rows we try to identify the output as a function of variable a. So when a is 0, y was 1 and when a was 1, y was 0. So you can see that the output was the complement of the variable a. 
so we connected the data line to a bar similarly for d1 data line d1 gets connected to the output when bc is 0 1 so bc is 0 1 in this row and this row so you can see when input variable a is 0 output is 1 and when input variable a is 1 output is 1 that is irrespective of a output was always 1 so we connected d1 to 1 similarly for d2 bc must be 1 0 that is this row and this row so irrespective of a output was 0 so we connected d2 line to 0 and for d3 it is this row and this row so d3 gets connected to y when bc is 1 1 so that will be this and this so when a is 0 output was 1 when a is 1 output was 0 so it was complement of a so we would connect d0 to a bar d1 to 1 d2 to 0 and d3 to a bar this connection was only possible because there were many data input lines and a single output line hence a mux is a data selector that means you had four data line at its input so depending on the select line a particular data line gets connected to an output whereas a demultiplexer is a data distributor that is you have only one data input line two select lines and four output lines and depending on the select line the data that is present at the input gets passed on to one of this output lines when you use a smaller size demultiplexer and if you follow the same steps that we had used while using a smaller size multiplexer then these two select lines would be connected to b and c now you have a single data line which can either be logic 0 logic 1 or it can be the remaining select line or the input variable a or it can be a bar so this data line at any given instant of time can only be one of these values whereas in case of a multiplexer you had a logic 1, you had a logic 0, you had complement of the variable and in some cases you also had a variable that is this d0 would be a in some cases. So depending on the select line you could select 4 of these values and connect them to a output whereas in case of demultiplexer you can have any one of these values that means you will never be able to realize this complete function using a smaller size demultiplexer that is if you connect this to logic 1 that means you have missed out variable a so if you connect it to variable a let me just connect it and show it to you if you connect it to variable a then for a b c 0 0 0 b c is 0 0 so this d in line that is a would be connected to this line and whatever is there on this data line would be passed on to this output so for abc is 0 0 0 since this line is 0 this line would be 0 and all others also would be 0 this we have seen in the truth table of 1 to 4 demultiplexer that is S1, S0, R, R, two select lines, E0 enable, Y3, Y2, Y1, and Y0, R, R, four output lines. So for S1, S0, if it is 0, 0, and enable has active high, then Y0 would be D in, and all others would be 0. Similarly for S1, S0, 0 1 y1 would be d in 
and all others would be zero. For S1, S0 as 1, 0, Y2 would be D in and all others would be zero. And for S1, S0 as 1, 1, Y3 would be D in and all others would be zero. Now this D in line is connected to A and since A is zero, Y0 also would be zero. So this is Y0, Y1, Y2 and Y3. So Y0 is zero, Y1 is zero, Y2 is zero and also Y3 is zero. But for zero, zero, zero input combination, from the function that we are asked to implement, the output must be one, but in the output, you have only zeros. So this function does not follow any input variables a, b or c. Hence, you will never be able to realize this using a smaller size demultiplexer. There are few functions which can be realized using a smaller size demultiplexer and the criteria for that is the output must be either the remaining variable or the complement of the remaining variable. So only in these two cases you will be able to realize a given function using a smaller size demultiplexer. That is if the output was 0 0 0 0 and 1 1 1 1 you can see that the output follows variable a. So in such a case you could have used a smaller size demultiplexer and you could have connected b and c to the select line. And this D in line would be connected to A because your output follows the variable A and all these four output lines could be connected to input of OR gate whose output would give you this function that is min term of 4, 5, 6 and 7. Similarly, if y was 1, 1, 1, 1 and 0, 0, 0, 0, then with the same connections and d in as a bar, you would have got min term 0, 1, 2 and 3. So you can realize only those functions that are either the complemented or uncomplemented form of a variable in the given problem. So for all other problems, that is something that was given here that is 0, 1, 3 and 5 you would never be able to realize it using a smaller size demultiplexer whereas in case of a multiplexer you could have realized it because you had many data input lines and depending on the select line a particular line got connected to the output line so this was a data selector and this is a data distributor thank you